Hi guys, it's Satchel Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. You guys have been saying that I need to do an updated video of my favorite zoologist rundown from least favorite to favorite. I did it two or three years ago and since then, of course, zoologists have not only released lots of new fragrances, but they have reinvented some as well. I'm happy to oblige. Zoologist, as I've always said, is my favorite brand, my favorite fragrance brand in the world, bar none. But you can't like everything that your favorite brand releases. I mean, you can, but it's not likely to happen. So without further ado, this is my favorite, least favorite to favorite rundown of Zoologist's entire line to date. So at number 27, the position has not changed. My least favorite zoologist perfume still remains the same as three years ago. It is Panda. And I'm talking about the 2014 version, which I think was made by Paul Kyler. The reason it is my least favorite zoologist fragrance is um, it's been obviously changed now and the new one is much higher on the list. But the reason it's my least favorite is because there was something just a bit astringent about it. It was a bamboo, green, watery, kind of lime-like fragrance, but there was something super bitter about it, which puts it at the bottom of my list. Um, I've reviewed all of them, by the way, so if you ever go back over my channel, you will see that I've talked about Zoologist a lot on my channel. So Panda is number 27. I'm gonna move through them relatively quickly. Number 26 is Musk Deer. Sorry, Victor. The reason this one is so low on the list is because it didn't go well on my skin. It's the first time I ever reviewed a zoologist fragrance where I had to base it on trying it on a few other people and by how it smelled on the card. On me personally, it just went so, so sharp and I know that that's not how it's supposed to smell. So, Musk Deer is a new direction for zoologists. They have released a few that are called the soft musks so they did veer off down a little path for a little while and i'm an old school zoologist fan i like the in your face bold crazy ones musk deer is a very evergreen scent it smells like pine pitch to me the dry down is beautiful on other people not me um i'm not the hugest fan of piney coniferous smells in fragrance anyway so that one for me is number 26, and I know lots of people love it. Um, it's, just, it's just not my favorite, so that's why. Number 25 is Mr. Squid. This one is low on the list because like the pine pitch coniferous thing, I have always said aquatic fragrances are my least favorite on the perfume wheel. Throw in their boring citruses as well, but Squid to me was very, very sweet, or it is very, very sweet. Celine Burrell that made it did something amazing. She took a squid bone and used headspace technology on it to get, I guess, the molecular structure of the scent of it and put it into the perfume. It was incense, it was uh, salty, it was aquatic, of course, but it was also very sweet. And I've always said I don't really wear sweet fragrances one of zoologist sweet ones is at the top but it's because it's very special so squid is number 25. 24 is snowy owl <laughs> these are new ones you can see that the, the soft musk thing has not been a thing for me i really appreciate this fragrance i think it's beautiful uh, the reason it's so low on the list again is there is an aquatic element to it there is a crisp clean airy type smell it's watery it smells like cucumber it's got a touch of coconut there's also a touch of earth like a very distant smell of soil in it and when i read about this fragrance my expectation was really high i thought it was going to be a powdery ethereal soapy type smell and it turns out that it wasn't i don't not like it it's just i like other things a lot more so snowy owl for me is low on the list as well and i'm sorry victor but yeah i've got my favorites that i am married to and snowy owl is not one of them number 23 is hyrax and hyrax is on low on the list because it's really challenging i love a challenging fragrance but to me i 
don't want to smell that animalic. It's the most animalic of the bunch. It's, it's got a triple animalic trio of craziness going on. It has Hyracium, Castorium, and Civet in it. Add that to some saffron, add it to some whiskey. It smells like a dry savanna where animals have been sleeping overnight. It's really dry, it's very, very strong. So if you like animalics, that one might be a good one for you, but I find it ch too challenging to wear. And one of my top ones is a challenging one, but this is challenging in a way that I don't really like to go for. So Hyrax is that one. The next one is the only one I haven't reviewed, but it will be coming up very, very soon. It is the new version of Rhino, made by Prin Lomros. Prin has made three perfumes for zoologists, and one of them is in my top five. The new Rhino, the reason it's low on the list for me is because it's very similar to Bat that Prin made, and it's also quite similar to Sloth, but to me, Sloth is the most interesting. So, it's a big tobacco, it's a soft leather, it's very dark, and the reason it's lower on the list is because I actually prefer the old Rhino a lot more. So this one had to go down, the other Rhino had to go up. So that's that one. Number 21 is the 2020 version of Dodo. Same reason of, for Rhino, I much prefer the old version of Dodo. This one again is very challenging in the same way that Hyrax is. It's an animalic to me. It's an animalic in the way of human animalic, not an animal, furry animal animalic. There's loads of black currant buds, there's loads of cumin, which are two very tricky notes to wear in perfume if they're used in quite big amounts, which they are in this one. It's very herbaceous, green, but cumin, if on the wrong skin or used too much, can actually smell a little bit like unwashed human. And black currant bud can go down the cat litter tray route if you're not careful. Both of those things contribute to the fact that this one is low on my list and the fact that I love the, new, the older one a lot more. So Dodo 2020 is that one. Number 20 on the list is Beaver, the newer version of Beaver. Not the one that came out right near the beginning when the, the brand had its inception. This one's another similar reason. I prefer the old Beaver. I really like this one. I really like the use of Castorium in it. I think there's Linden in this one. It's a, it's almost like a, a watery, gentle, leathery, animalic smell with blossoms in it. It's really pleasant and I do like the smell of it, it's just not one that I would buy or have in my collection. I appreciate the artistry of it and the idea and the theme, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of low down on the list because I much prefer the new one. Number 19 is Bat 2020 version, the one made by Prin Lomros. I touched on it a little bit earlier. The reason this one's quite, well, we're getting to the middle of the list now, but the reason this one isn't near the top is because to me it's very, it's not similar, but the style and feeling of it is very close to Rhino and Sloth, and Sloth is my favorite of the three. So this one is, it's got a, a touch sourness in it. <laughs> it's less cave-like than the original, and it's a bit more fruity than the original bat. It has a almost, not rotten fruit, but kind of turning a little bit bad, or a little bit syrupy or spoiled in some way, fruity smell, with some earthy green tones going on. And I liked the original bat more that was much more cave and stone and earth. So that's why bat is in that position. Coming in at position 18, we have the original bat from 2016. This is another one that I really appreciate the artistry. This is one of the award winning fragrances from the entirety of Zoologist's line. Super challenging though, really love it. This is the one that really smelled like upturned earth. There was a little bit of banana going on, a little bit of uh, ban banana guava as well. So it was about South American fruit bats eating fruit and then flying back into their cave. This one had the strongest earthy note that I'd ever tried in a fragrance and that's why it's kind of getting towards the middle of the list. 
but it's still not my favorite. There are much more exciting ones for me coming up. Position 17 is Koala. Koala is so cute. I really like the fragrance. I think it's really cool. It's a little bit quiet for me. As I said before, I like the, the really out there, crazy zoologist fragrances that make you go, huh? But that have some level of beauty to them. Koala is a lovely, cute little fougere with a short blast of citrus, at, uh, sorry, eucalyptus at the beginning. And then it reveals a really big white musk note. It's like a clean shaven man smell. Just been to the barber and had, you know, everything done so he can go out and do whatever he needs to do for his day. It's very uh, dandy and gentlemanly and also gentle. So I really liked that one. But um, the classic, I guess, fougere sort of structure is another thing that isn't something that I would go for or buy a bottle of. But I love the image. It's a little cricket outfit because it's from they're from Australia which I think is really cute so what I just is just full of cuteness really number 16 is elephant and this one when it first came out I liked it a lot more but as more and more things got released elephant was one of the earlier ones not right at the beginning but it did come out quite a few years ago uh, when it was released I did like it quite a lot but it slipped down because other things have come out that have just overtaken it so elephant is a very dry sandalwood fragrance with again dry leaves there's also a coconut note in it which is also dry in my review i remember saying that it smelled like coconut husk as opposed to coconut meat so it's a extremely dry foliage type smell it's meant to be about elephants trudging through the undergrowth and you know breaking all the branches and stuff like that so it's a really cool fragrance um i gave my 10 mil to my mum because she really really liked it and she's finished it as well well done mum so yeah that's elephant number 15 on the list is beaver the older version of beaver <clears throat> that no longer exists i'm going to talk about all of them because you might be able to get some of them somewhere i don't know this one was way more animalic than the one that exists now. This one to me felt more in the style of beaver. The new one focuses more on the pond element, or not the pond, the, the kind of dam, the watery habitat that they live in. The other one was much more punchy, it was a bit sweeter and it was more focused on the animalic part of the fragrance and I really liked it. I can conjure it in my brain now actually, I remember smelling it I took my sample to India and I wore it in India and I really enjoyed it. Smooth, sweet, manageable animalic that I really enjoyed, but unfortunately it's gone now. So that's beaver. Number 14 is Macaque, the monkey. This one was another one that I really liked when it first came out, but since other things have taken over. So even though they're not super high on the list, it doesn't mean that I don't like them. It's just that there's other things that are that I, I'm wowed by more now. So Macaque is one of Zoologist's green fragrances. It's got a big focus on galbanum resin, which is planty. Um, it's it's a, a very intense green note. It smells like shelled peas. It smells a bit like tossed salad. It smells a bit like carrot peelings to me. And you've got in there some woods. You've got a bit of apple as well. So it's it's a bright green, easy to wear spring-like fragrance, but with a huge focus on galbanum. And I really liked it at the time, but it's just slipped down over time. We get This is the middle of the list now. So everything from here up is things that I, are things that I really, really like. So number 13, and it's not unlucky 13 at all, is Chameleon, this cute little thing. There you go. Oh, look how shiny that is. I remember smelling this. Victor showed me this himself when I met him in London and it wasn't released yet. And this is as close as I've ever been able to get to the perfect Ylang Ylang fragrance. And if you guys follow me, you will know that I have been hunting for the perfect Ylang Ylang fragrance for a long time. Nothing has come close to this yet. I still am hunting. The reason this one isn't the perfect Ylang Ylang for me, it's 99% though, is because it's a little bit quiet on me towards the middle and end of when you wear it. The opening is perfection. 
It's a really big ylang ylang, really tropical, really sunny, perfect, realistic, the most realistic ylang ylang fragrance I've tried. And it's got coconut in there. It has a very extensive note list, but to me, it's quite simple when you wear it. There is frangipani, I think, in here. There's salt as well. And it's, it just makes you happy when you wear it. The, the, the only reason it's not my perfect ylang, like I said, is because it does wear a little bit quiet. But look at this. I mean, how can you not love this? This is so cool. Oh, makes me very happy. Number 12 is Dragonfly. Dragonfly is about to be reformulated and changed into an entirely new dragonfly, new perfumer. I'm talking about the purple liquid Dragonfly, the first one that came out. Absolutely beautiful. It's zoologist's twist on an iris perfume. It's an aqueous floral about dragonflies flitting around a pond. It has an iridescence to it. It is lotus, I think, as well. And the twist in this one is rice. So there is a starchy, earthy rice note in amongst all of these beautiful powdery notes. It's a really good one. And it's one that I probably would have in my collection, but I think it's gone now. So uh, I'm really excited to try the new one because I like the theme of Dragonfly anyway. So Dragonfly is lovely, beautiful color purple, like pastel purple color perfume, just really nice all round. So that's Dragonfly. Number 11 is Civet. I really want this one. I feel like I need to have it in my collection. This is another Oriental by Zoologist and it's very, very complex Civet. The main notes you smell here are the Amber Accord, a bit of orange blossom. There's also orange and coffee. So it's a very dense perfume. It almost feels a little bit chocolatey sometimes. Very sweet. Of course, it has civet in there, so there is the animalic underneath. It's not pushed too far, though. This one has a vintage feel as well, but it's playful and it does push over to gourmand a little bit. It's great and it works so well in cold weather. It's a warm hug, it's an amber, but it's an amber with a difference. I've not smelled an amber like this before and I've not smelled a perfume like this one before, so that's why it's quite high on the list. Number 10, we're in the top 10, is Dodo, the original Dodo that was made by Joseph Delap. I do have still my 10 mil. I've only got about three or four mils of it left, but this was really interesting, really cool fragrance. They called it at the beginning a peculiar fougere, which had me intrigued. I smelled this one at the same time as Chameleon, but I just couldn't remember it. And I had to wait so long for it to come out. And I actually had dreams about this perfume. Can you imagine? I dreamt about a perfume called Dodo. This one was really great. Um, I don't know how popular it was for everyone else or if everyone else liked it, but I definitely did. This was fern, it was salt, there was a, light, a lot of lychee in it, there was raspberry. It was an ultra green, modern, strange fougere, nothing like koala. Koala is a little bit more classic fougere. This one is it was really powerful as well, almost powdery at the same time. It incorporated raspberry for the diet of what dodos used to eat, ferns, oh gosh, just greenery of the Mauritius where dodos used to live. And I think it was an all round, really true zoologisty feeling perfume. It really felt like a zoologist. And um, yeah, I, I just loved it. I thought it was really great much preferred it to the new one. Number nine is Hummingbird. I actually think I wanna get Hummingbird in my collection. I should have got, got it ages ago, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. It's just one of those things. Hummingbirds are actually my favorite animal in the entire world. And it's actually the perfume that made me notice Zoologist in the first place. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a Hummingbird perfume out there. I must smell it. This one is Zoologist's take on a fruity floral and it's done so, so well. It's mainly about honeysuckle, but there are multiple other flowers in there. Cherries, apples, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cream. It's a fruity floral like no other. I have not tried a fruity floral like this perfume before. And every time I wear it, I think I need to get it. So I think it may be another one that I'll get. Yeah, it smells kind of feminine, but there's enough of an edge to it to, for me that anyone can wear it. So 
Hummingbird by them is great. Interesting fruity floral because there are so many boring ones out there. Zoologists do not do boring. Number eight is Panda, the newer version of Panda made by none other than Christian Carbonell. This is fantastic. I can imagine that this is a really good seller for zoologists. It is so much better and more wearable than the original one. It is a, it feels like a fougere a little bit as well, but it's interesting. It has a similar earthy note to the original bat, except not in so much of a big amount. It is very clean. Um, it's bamboo again. There's a green watery element, but this is a really strong green perfume. It's, you can really feel it. The wood kind of pierces the air in this one. If I'm gonna liken it to anything, I would say it's a touch like Aventus by Creed. Don't kill me, Victor, but there is elements of it. That sort of woodiness with something very clean and fresh over the top. So Panda is fantastic. It's well liked by a lot of people for very good reason. And it's another one that I would have in my collection. I just have to get round to it. Number seven is Rhino, the old version. One of the more challenging fragrances by Zoologist, definitely. I still have some, um, a small amount of it that I'm saving. It's very tricky, this one. It's a really big leather. I think Victor changed it because he said it never really felt like what Rhino was for him in his brain. It's a dark medicinal leather with geranium and oud and tobacco and vetiver and leather and everything heavy that you can think. It feels like charcoal gray in color when you smell it. It's, like I said, it's medicinal. Oh, there's a lot of rum as well. It's also boozy on top of all of that. It's really great and it's, it is a difficult one to wear, but when the occasion fits right, I think it's amazing. So if you can find the older one, try it out, but it's, it's like leather boots. There's no, no, it's not a reserved suede-like leather at all. It's in your face, dark, hulking beast of a leather perfume. And I loved it. Number six is the one that gets called the most challenging by a lot of people. I'm a huge fan of this one. It is T-Rex. Hello, Mr. T-Rex. How are you doing with your little detective outfit on? I'm obsessed with this. Another one that's very tricky to wear. This is about extinction. This is about fireballs hitting the earth, scorched trees, dinosaurs being split in two. <laughs> I love it. Really powerful fragrance, very challenging. Made by Antonio Gardoni, who is a fantastic perfumer. This, he was the perfect choice to make this because bold is what he does. The main focus for me here is patchouli and cade oil. So it has a herbal smoky feel right at its very core but there is black pepper in here. There are greenery, herbal notes. I mean, Cade does that anyway. There are white florals that might've been around at the time. There's champaca, it's a favorite of Antonio to put champaca in things. Smooth, smoky, crazy, roaring mentalness of a perfume and I absolutely love it. I loved my review that I did of it as well. Even if I can just blow my own trumpet for a second. <laughs> T-Rex. We're going on to the top five. Are you ready? Number five is Sloth. I have just ordered a bottle of Sloth from Victor. It is on its way to me. Because it's a Sloth, it's probably gonna take 10 years to get here. But this is my favorite of the three that Prin has made for Zoologist. It's very interesting. It was one of the most difficult reviews I've ever done for Zoologist. I had to wear five mils of it over multiple, multiple days to really try and figure out how I was gonna tell you guys what it smelled like. It's another foresty scent, but it has a lactonic acai or acai berry smell in it. It's like berries steeped in milk going on with really sultry woody notes in a forest. So it's very tricky. It's a tricky one to wear and to describe. The dry down is the real magic. I've had so many compliments on it. I had a policeman tell me that I smelled nice when I wore it. Or was it a police lady? I can't remember. A police person said, 
wow, what is that? <laughs> I showed it to my cousin, he wants to get a bottle too. It's fantastic, really strong, really long lasting, edgy, not smelled anything like it before. And it took me a while to get to fall in love, but now that I have, I've ordered a bottle so I can have all of my top five in my collection. Sloth is great. Number four is bzzz, this little bee. Oh God, bee. Bee is unbelievable. I, I can't get over how good this fragrance is. I don't wear gourmands and this is considered a gourmand, maybe not by Victor or by a lot of people, but the opening to me has a toffee, like cinder toffee, almost caramel like opening. There is beeswax in here. There is a royal jelly accord. There's a lot of mimosa, gentle yellow flower. And I said in my review, and I still say it now, the magic of this perfume is the incense. That's what pulls it away from being a full on gourmand for me. The incense in here is absolutely stunning. It just, streaks through the perfume and it's it it's just unexpected and it, it the more you wear it the more it gets revealed this is potent i can't tell you how potent this perfume is it's like a one two sprayer which is why i haven't used that much of mine but the artwork is fantastic it's got the cutest little queen bee on it oh she's so cute i am so happy to have this in my collection and i'm gonna try it when it gets to summer. I know it's really heavy, but just one spray of this I think is gonna be incredible when it gets really warm. So B is number four. It's time for the top three. Number three is Nightingale. This is one that has never moved from my favorites. It's never going to either. When I reviewed this, I didn't like it as much as I do now. I have grown to just fall in love with this perfume. It is one of the best Sheepras I've ever smelled. It is perfection. It is hyper powdery, rose, plum blossom, violet, woods, pinkness. And it's a Sheepra done in zoologist's style. Really, really powerful. So you don't need to wear a lot of it. Again, I've worn Nightingale a lot, but even so, not so much. Bright pink, as you can see, it's themed on Japan and the little nightingale is wearing a kimono, which is just so cute, I could cry. And yeah, this is just so lovely. If you like a throwback perfume, this is made by Tomu Inaba, who makes my favorite perfume by Zoologist. He is a genius and I cannot wait to see what he's gonna do next in any capacity for any brand. I'm following that man like a hawk. If you watch this, Tomu, I'm watching you. So the top two, I've always said that these two have been in a race and I changed my mind over time. Sometimes I like one more than the other, but I've settled. So number two is Camel. I think this is a favorite for a lot of people. The reason being is it's an Oriental and Orientals are a very well liked style of perfume. Oh, it's so good. I haven't worn this for so long. So Camel was made by Christian Carbonell as well, another perfumer that I watch very closely. And this one is about camels on trade routes and the things that they might be carrying. It's got a stewed fruit smell in there. It's got dates, it's got raisin-like feeling, a raisin-like feeling. There is a lot of frankincense. There is an animalic undertone from Civet, but it's not too much. There is orange blossom in it as well, and there is a touch of oud as well. There's a couple of um, zoologists that have oud in, but this is one of the more oudy ones, but it's oud, I've never seen oud placed in such a perfect way before. So Camel is my oriental love. Orientals are my favorite style of fragrance, so it's kind of a given that I was gonna like this. So Camel, so close to my heart. And it's time for the final one. Moth. Moth takes the number one spot. This is not even a perfume, this is art. This is made by Tomu Inaba, who made Nightingale. And every time I smell this, something happens to me deep inside. Every time I wear it, my mood changes. I feel like a superhero. It's so exquisite and arty and not like anything else I've ever smelled before. 
and the, not to mention the performance. I mean, it, it's like one of those 24 hour things, seriously. It is centered around, for me, honey and smoke. There is also incense in there. There's a lot of softer floral notes like heliotrope. I think there's maybe violet and rose in it as well. There is cypriol in this one. There's a touch of oud in here as well. And honey, incense, smoke. And it's got gentle parts. There are, there's lots of spice in it as well. It's incredible. I can't even, it's probably in my top five perfumes period ever. I think it is. I think on my Fragrantica profile, it's up there. So Moth is in my top five perfumes that I've ever smelled. It's not gonna be for everyone. You have to like honey because there's a lot of honey in here, but it just does something to me. It, it's got a touch medicinal as well. It's so interesting. It's genius. I think this should have won multiple awards for Victor and it hasn't and I'm really annoyed about that. <laughs> so that's it. That's Moth. It's my number one spot for zoologists. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. I am Ouch Pomino, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I will see you guys soon. Goodbye. I'm gonna wear sloth today from my 10 mil in preparation for my bottle coming to me very slowly from Canada. <laughs> Bye guys.